So a few months ago, we posted a video and had a conversation about what we as a company were doing about COVID and we wanted to have a follow-up COVID conversation. So I sat down and spoke with one of our captains, Nick Edmonds, about how life is now with the, not post-COVID, but just with the situation the way it is and the way yachting and life on a boat has developed and changed. So take a look, enjoy. Hi, I'm Michael Reardon. I have Captain Nick Edmonds with me today. Nick, thank you for doing this. We're having a chance to catch up with people and explain a little bit what's going on in a sort of post COVID crisis adaptation and just have a bunch of questions for you. So to begin with, what's the black eye about? Is that COVID related or not? Yeah, not, not COVID related, just uh, doing a bit of safety training on board and uh, the chef pulled back the fire pump and I caught the end of his elbow, unfortunately. So a bit of a sad story, but it's healing pretty well now. <laughs> good safety drill. Very good. All right. So let's begin. So industry shift, our first question for you. What have you seen happen in the industry and what happened for you? Oh, look, we we're going into a shipyard period uh, when COVID hit. I've seen a massive shift in behavior across the board, uh, not just within yachting, but in the Fort Lauderdale community. Uh, in the early stages, people were unsure of the severity of COVID-19 and how it would directly affect them. Uh, initially, half the yachts, well-known contractors, took immediate and effective action by closing their doors uh, with little compromise. As a majority, I'd say the yachting industry has reacted appropriately across the board, uh, with most yachts taking measures to minimize the spread of COVID-19. Great. Okay. All right. Second question. Um, how, how has and how will the industry adapt? How has, how will the industry adapt to what's happened here? Oh, look, I think it, it has to. Uh, I mean, COVID-19 has kind of set the precedent for onboard hygiene. Uh, I don't see yachts enforcing masks in the long term, but, you know, with boss on and charters coming up, you know, I think uh, the level of hygiene will continue forward. I don't see masks being something that's going to be in place all the time, maybe in the first few months. Right, uh, but right. definitely promoting, uh, you know, cleaning of hands, social distancing, and just a general awareness, really, of uh, what we've been through and how we're going to continue to protect ourselves moving forward. All right. All right. And how have clients been reacting, both owners, charter guests? So, so initially, we had to deal with the, the first hurdle, which was this boat's supposed to be heading on a boat to the med uh, for the season with the boss. Uh, this had been planned a year in advance. And... Uh, I guess number one was we're not going to Italy and, uh, you know, trying to get it out of a contract or, you know, shift our dates became difficult because uh, unprecedented times, no one was really prepared for this. Right. Um, but, you know, our owners have been completely responsive to the pandemic and entirely supportive throughout. Uh, we intend to get back to some normality in the coming months. And, um, yeah, we're going to do our best to continue to operate, uh, you know, with, with some measures in place. Uh, right. What have been the specific adaptations that have happened for you guys with COVID living on a boat? Oh, it's been tough. Uh, you know, we got seven crew on board, all living on a 130 foot boat. Uh, you know, areas like the crew mess is, of course, really hard to try and minimize, you know, the spreading of germs. Like most yachts, we implemented a COVID-19 policy pretty early on, and that policy outlined clear instructions for the crew. Uh, things down like uh, lockdown, onboard uh, contaminations, communal sanitation, uh, personal precautions that we expect them to take, and uh, you know things like taking temperatures and reporting any illnesses. So uh, another tough one for us was, although you can keep the boat nice and clean, we still need to bring on food and supplies and how do we deal with that? So, you know, like most boats, we had provisions delivered to the boat. We clean them all off and then bring them onto the boat. So we've managed to keep a pretty, uh, pretty clean environment on board and have been lucky enough not to uh, have any cases. And then what did you do for vendors or people coming aboard from the outside? Same thing. Uh, so we put a, a contractor policy in place and it's sort of like a two sheet document. Uh, one sheet is just a series of questions about their health and the last, you know, where have they been in the last 14 days? How are they feeling? Do they know anyone? Have they had it? 
And then the second thing is basically a policy of, hey, you want to come on board and do some work. Um, these are the measures we need you to take to come on. So, of course, gloves, masks. We normally uh, clear out an area that the contract is going to work in. Once they're finished, we'll clean all that up again, and then they're off board again. So, uh, really, it's just a mutual understanding of uh, the rules and regulations and make sure everyone stays safe, contractor and crew. Mm. And then how about anything positive through all this that you're going to keep? Yeah, look, I mean, I think it's, uh, there's parts of it that's just been positive all around, you know. Um, I'd like to see crew continue their efforts in upholding a high level of social hygiene. Uh, I think uh, it's highlighted a few important areas that uh, we could do better in always. So uh, personally, for me, shaking hands is something that's going to be in the past. Uh, you know, it's, it's so easy to greet someone and put your hand out and equally we don't know what's on their hand and that gets spread around the boat. So I think for me, I'm going to continue implementing on, you know, verbal greetings uh, and uh, also just having a, a, a bottle of hand sanitizer handy. Uh, that's just worked wonders and why not wash our hands? We're touching buttons, we're opening doors and right. I'll, I'll continue to use that from here on out and I hope the crew do too. All right. All right. And then last thing, what are you most looking forward to in the post COVID world? Well, number one has to be international travel. Uh, one, getting out and getting salty again, going out, operating, that's what we do. Two, uh, international travel to go home uh, for a vacation at some point. Uh, and uh, number three, eating out and rock climbing. <laughs> Nick, thanks so much. Really appreciate you giving us this update and uh, I hope you guys get out there real quick and stay safe and thanks for your time. Yeah, no worries at all. All right.